Three Minute Mondays with the Catechism and Sam, October 18th edition, num episode number 15, the Canon of Scripture. It was by the apostolic tradition that the church discerned which writings are to be included in the list of the sacred books. This complete list is called the Canon of Scripture. It includes 46 books of the Old Testament, 45 if we count Jeremiah and Lamentations as one, and 27 for the New. The Old Testament. The Old Testament is an indisputable part of sacred scripture. Its books are divinely inspired and retain a permanent value. For the Old Covenant has never been revoked. Indeed, the economy of the Old Testament was deliberately so oriented that it should prepare for and declare in prophecy the coming of Christ, Redeemer of all men. Even though they contain matters imperfect and provisional, the books of the Old Testament bear witness to the whole divine pedagogy of God's saving love. These writings are a storehouse of sublime teaching on God and of sound wisdom on human life, as well as a wonderful treasury of prayers. In them, too, the mystery of our salvation is present in a hidden way. Christians venerate the Old Testament as true word of God. The Church has always vigorously opposed the idea of rejecting the Old Testament under the pretext that the New has rendered it void. The New Testament. The Word of God, which is the power of God for salvation to everyone who has faith, is set forth and displays its power in a most wonderful way in the writings of the New Testament, which hand on the ultimate truth of God's revelation. Their central object is Jesus Christ, God's incarnate Son. His acts, teachings, passion, and glorification and his church's beginnings under the Spirit's guidance. The Gospels are the heart of all the scriptures because they are our principal source for the life and teaching of the incarnate Word, our Savior. We can distinguish three stages in the formation of the Gospels. One, the life and teaching of Jesus. The church holds firmly that the four Gospels, whose historicity she unhesitatingly affirms, faithfully hand on with Jesus, the Son of God, while he lived among men, really did and taught for their eternal salvation until the day when he was taken up. 2. The Oral Tradition For after the ascension of the Lord, the apostles handed on to their hearers what he had said and done, but with that fuller understanding which they, instructed by the glorious events of Christ and enlightened by the Spirit of Truth, now enjoy. And 3. The Written Gospels the sacred authors, in writing the four Gospels, selected certain of the many elements which had been handed on, either orally or already in written form. Others they synthesized or explained with an eye to the situation of the churches, while sustaining the, former of, the form of preaching, but always in such a fashion that they have told us the honest truth about Jesus. The fourfold Gospel holds a unique place in the church as is evident both in the veneration which the liturgy accords it and in surpassing attraction it has exercised on the saints at all times. There is no doctrine which could be better, more precious, and more splendid than the text of the gospel. Behold and retain what our Lord and Master Christ has taught by his words and accomplished by his deeds. But above all, it's the gospels that occupy my mind when I'm at prayer. My poor soul has so many needs, and yet this is the one thing needful. I'm always finding fresh lights there, hidden and enthralling, hidden, hidden and enthralling meanings. Right, Sam?